Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of my new show for In Between Media, Backtracks. It's going to be a show all about music, a little break from my normal football content. I'll be bringing in a guest every week with a topic they'd like to discuss revolving around music. It could be a song, it could be a genre, it could be a specific concert they've been to, it could be anything. It could be one artist's catalog of work, it doesn't matter. We're just here to talk about some music and for my very first episode i felt like it was probably fitting to bring in someone that i'm comfortable with that everyone knows my beautiful wonderful amazing wife jennifer Pollard. <laughs> sorry the that, baby monitor started beeping and i was like well that's not a good intro <laughs> okay here I am. oh well perfect start you came in flying i love it <laughs> okay. Well, for guys, if you, if you don't know Jen, she is my wife of almost 13 years. We have a beautiful baby boy who's not a baby or he's almost going to be in kindergarten soon. Uh, she is a writer and editor for In Between Media. She is also an editor for Fantasy Pros and the co-founder of 32 and 32 Fantasy Football with yours truly. Jen, how are we today? Uh, minus some internet issues. I think we're, we're good. It's Friday. It's almost Easter. The weather's warming up here in Denver. So I think, I think we're going to make it today. Yeah, we definitely, uh, we definitely put in the work and we'll earn getting this episode completed and out there. It's been a journey to get here. <laughs> yes. A lot of fighting with the internet, a lot of time on the phone, but we're here and mm -hmm. I'm very excited to have you as my first guest. Thank you very much for coming on with me. Of course. Awesome. So what did you want to talk about today? For me, I think I want to talk about how important music is and can be for a relationship, whether it's a friendship or a marriage or a partnership, whatever that is. For us, I mean, we've taken so many road trips. When we first had Jackson, we had to drive around in the car to get him to go to <laughs> sleep. Like, And if we didn't have similar tastes in music, I'm not sure how far we'd actually make it. Cause I mean, if you don't have shared interest in music, it's like, what do you do? Audiobooks? But then I right. guess you still have to have a shared interest in murder mystery versus romance versus Westerns, yeah. whatever it is. So, I mean, for us, we, and you can share your, your version of the story, but um, we, connected with music immediately. Yep. Oh, that's very true. So how I remember it is you were coming to pick me up from work for lunch on your lunch hour and you rolled up in your blue Mitsubishi Gallant. Love that car. And you were blasting an album that is very near and dear to my heart. Punk and Drublick from No Effects. It's something that, I mean, I, my formative years, finding punk rock, skating, uh, that was pretty much constantly in my ear. And at 24, I felt like it was weird that I was still listening to it, just kind of because we were always told when we were kids, you're going to grow out of it. You'll, you'll grow yeah. out of that. You're not going to listen to this crap music when you're when you're an adult. You know, it's a, it's a kid thing. It's a high school thing. And then here you are, this ultra professional <laughs> who works a nine to five, rolls up blasting one of my favorite punk rock albums of all time. Yeah. I mean, it's a great album and it, you only knew no effects if you were part of the punk scene, like it, they weren't played on the radio. So it wasn't like a mainstream kind of group band. What do you call, what would you even call no effects a band? Yeah. Yeah. They're a band. Yeah. So you only knew them if you were part of the punk scene and there was I would say a relatively small percentage of the population who, who liked that kind of music. So the fact that we both loved that album, loved that band eight years removed from, you know, high school. And when we were going to smaller venues to see these bands, that was really cool. That was really cool. It was. Well, and it's like, like you said, and especially in like the mid to late nineties, when we were in high school, it was punk rock was still so obscure. Like, yeah. They weren't work tour kind of changed that in like the late nineties, early two thousands. But until then, like bands like no effects, blink 182 is a great example. I think yeah. when we were freshmen and sophomore in high school, nobody knew who blink 182 was. They got right. lucky with uh dude ranch, but it was such a soul. And for you to be into that was just kind of oh, for me. <laughs> well, and then I started going through your CD books 
it was like, oh man, she's got Pantera in here. Uh, you had some like incredible mix CDs that were just that blew my mind. You had that hip hop, like you had such a crazy mix of music, such an eclectic mix. And that was something that I really fell in love with about you too, because I'm the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I can go from Britney Spears to Chris Isaac, like, and then over to Sublime. I mean, right. 40 ounces is also one of the greatest albums that we can take from that same kind of period too. And um, first time listening to that CD with you and we are singing every lyric from beginning to end, all all tracks. Every track. Yeah. One, it's one of those few, much like Punk and Drublick, I mean, really 40 Ounces to Freedom is one of the few albums out there where I don't skip a track. Exactly. There is a one song where it's like, yeah, no, I mean, it's fine, but I'm gonna skip it. Because even Sublime self-titled, you get to what I got, and it's like, next. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah I, I agree. I've heard that song so many times. There's like 30 versions of it, and it's fine. I can move on mm -hmm. from that. Mm -hmm. But I think one of my favorite stories from early on, outside of the no effects, was um, I come to your apartment. I was probably already living with you by then. It was like probably five days into our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> and <clears throat> we went to meet your best friend who you grew up with, Austin. Mm -hmm. I hadn't met him before officially. So this was kind of a big deal for me to get to meet him. He's a part of your family. Mm -hmm. So we're driving down Interstate 25, which if you're not from Colorado, Interstate 25 cuts right through the middle of Denver, right through the heart of Denver. It's referred to as the Valley Highway. Um, so we're driving. It's night. <clears throat> we're listening to Pantera because you had Cowboys from Hell. I was very excited about that. We're listening to it and you're kind of tired. I think we had already been out for a little while and you fell asleep during the lull in cemetery gates. I didn't know you were asleep. <laughs> Which I don't understand how you could not know that, because, that your passenger was asleep. Well, I was I mean, focused on the road and I don't know, you probably, you couldn't have, you might've like just dozed off. Maybe. And maybe. then if you're familiar with the song, it goes from like calm, light guitar, soft voice to out of nowhere, it just goes. <laughs> you have two 12 inch subwoofers in the trunk of your Galant, which we still have to this day. Just you have transfer subs, cars, yeah. not the, the subs. <clears throat> Those things will shake the glass in a car. And when you have the volume turned up, as you always <laughs> do with Pantera, <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen anyone wake up faster or more pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> in a car and it makes sense to me that I don't think honestly I think that might have ruined Pantera for you because I don't think you've listened to Pantera since I mean prob probably not also that was part of my angry teenager phase was true having Pantera I still I mean if we were to listen to it today I guess I'd be interested to get my reaction to that but I mean nobody takes kindly to being woken up <laughs> not like that like that so <laughs> I'm blameless in this. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the thing I love so much about music and a big part of why I wanted to do that show, do this show is because it's such a personal thing to people mm -hmm. Me like memories, like, okay, for our wedding. Now we can't remember where these songs were a part of our <laughs> wedding because it's, been, and it makes me feel better that it's not just me. Cause Oh, thank God. If I was the only one who didn't remember, but like Ray LaMontagne, anytime I hear trouble, I think of our wedding. Anytime I hear any Jason Mraz song, I think about our wedding mm -hmm. because that was a huge such, and we had to pick that stuff out. We put so much work into the playlist for our reception and all like, but we didn't, we didn't play trouble, not trouble. Um, <laughs> You're the best what? thing I <laughs> yeah. suggest. This is actually, I don't know if I've ever told you this story at the time I was working at a wood shop with your brother, her brother, Zach, when we were getting married. And the Ray LaMontagne song, Trouble, came on. And the only line I heard was saved by a woman. And I was like, I think we should do this for our wedding. And your brother looks at me and he goes, if you want to get married, don't use that song in your wedding. <laughs> and then I listened to the rest of it and I was like, oh, yeah, no, no, this is not a wedding song. Folks. Well, I think you reached out to me and you were like, hey, we should do this song. And I was like, what? No, are you insane? That's not, that's not it. it Apparently. I, I found our song, the Ray LaMontagne song. What is it called? 
um, you are the best thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a terrible female when it comes to things like that. <laughs> um, it's the song that ends. Um, oh my gosh. What is that movie with Paul Rudd? I love and, you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We went to go see that's it in right. the theater and that's the last song or it's part of the credits or something like that. And I was like, that song is amazing. But that was 2006. 2009, seven. seven, eight, something like that. So we didn't have Shazam. We didn't have all the things that we have today to be nope. able to find out what song that was. So it was like highly researched for me to find that song. And then history is history mm -hmm. and it's still our song. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Just that music is important. End of story. <laughs> it is. And like, I think something that we've, our musical tastes have grown together too, which you don't necessarily see a lot in people where two people, but I mean, it probably helps that we're together all the time and listening mm -hmm. to the same stuff most of the time. But like we find music together. We've, we reinvigorated a love for going to concerts together out of nowhere. Really? Mm -hmm. You got, you got me tickets to see Alkaline Trio is one of my favorite bands of all time. I've probably seen those guys 30 or 40 times. I hadn't seen them in years, but for my birthday, Jen got me tickets to go see them. From we there, like, we... I felt like we were like the oldest people in that venue. Uh, we might have been. It's pretty close. I was seeing them I... when they were like relatively unknown. Yeah. But... but that was a good time. I mean, it was weird because we got there early and stood in line to get in. And then like we walked into the venue and like all the lights were on and... Yeah, that was it weird. It was empty. It was so weird. It was so weird. Well, and we didn't stay we were, the whole time, did we? No, because of parking. <laughs> because our parking expired at 11 <laughs> o'clock. We're so old. <laughs> so we had to leave. But like, I thought it was really, it was cool that we got to do that. And then from there, we went to And you to introduced see... me to them at that point in time, basically. Like, mm -hmm. I had heard a song here and there. But, I mean, listening to a whole collection of their music. Yep. Um, was an interesting experience for me because generally when you go see a concert for the most part you know a lot of the music already so you can sing along you can dance you can get excited for the music but that was a unique experience for sure it was a fun one um it was mm -hmm. interesting seeing them live for the first time i mean it had honestly probably been 20 almost 20 years since i had seen them at that point and i i was Really excited. I got to do it with you. I mean, a lot of people our age that are going back to see that stuff, their spouse probably isn't going because it's probably more nostalgic for them than anything else. Yeah. But then after that, we went, you were four or five months pregnant and we went to Red Rocks. Jackson's first concert in your belly, Primus <laughs> at Red Rocks. Yeah. And then after he was born, we went and saw Lauren Hill at Red Rocks, the Miseducation of Lauren Hill 25th anniversary tour. For anybody who hasn't been to Red Rocks, is coming to oh. Denver, and Red Rocks is open because they're not open in the winter. But you have to go to Red Rocks. You have to. It's it's an amazing experience. It's probably the best place, one of the best places in the world to see a concert. There are bands that will go out of their way on tour to make sure. Primus is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, Blues Traveler plays Red Rocks every Fourth of July, and they have mm -hmm. still since, like thirty still, years. 30 something yeah it, it's incredible mm -hmm. and like having venues like that obviously is going to draw you in but then we discovered you talked about driving around putting jackson to sleep because he would only sleep mm -hmm. in the truck that gave us an interesting opportunity to listen to a ton of music we had been to have sirius xm radio at the time and alt nation and man we found so much new music we but did. there's one artist that i think i'd like for you to kind of talk about a little bit that we found specifically well, he stands out above everyone else, and that's Rex Orange County. Um, he, the first time we heard Lovin' was easy, Lovin' is easy, um, it was like, what in the holy heavens is in my ears right now? This song is amazing. And it's got curse words in it, so caution, explicit language, <laughs> but um, we, that song that album specifically just reminds me of jackson being a baby i mean we bathed him in our kitchen sink listening to rex orange county and his new album that just came out his nanny dropped him off the other day and she was listening to the new album and apparently he really likes the new album too so um when we had a chance to go see him in person it was like yes 
we are doing yeah. this. This is going to be amazing because again, we knew every single word from every single track for both of his albums at that time. We had to study up on his new one, Apricot Peaches. Nope. Pony. 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 Apricot, Apricot Princess is the one that has all of our favorite songs on it. That's his best album, in my opinion. Okay. Yes. See, I'm I'm not any good with remembering things like that. I just know what I like. <laughs> um, but I mean, we got to go see him in concert. And that was one of the most thrilling, exciting, incredible performances I have ever seen. It was flashy and it was funny and it was lights and it was oh it was so great and then COVID happened and literally like, like a month and a half later a month and a half later and it was a real bummer too because I think we walked away from that concert and mm -hmm. we had it in our heads like oh man we have to do this so much more often why are yes. we doing this like at least once a month like yeah. we, we well, have to make this a priority yeah and with Jackson being older at that point in time he was two two and a half he was staying with my parents. So it was like, we had a real opportunity to go and do that and have that be like a date night once a mm -hmm. month or every couple of months or whatever. And then, yeah, cause that was January 24th. And then our lockdown happened March 17th. So like just about two months later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Pandemics. It was a real bummer, but also at the same time, without that pandemic, we're not here talking about it. So exactly um, in that respect, I am thankful. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's fair to say like music is a huge part of our lives and it's important to me that we be able to talk about it and get that out there for people to hear because the world, I think we feel like a lot of people, a lot of people are so one dimensional and we view them as so one dimensional and we don't understand that these people have other interests in their lives, other things that they do, other things that they care about, maybe even more than the thing you hold them or think about them in regards mm -hmm. to. So I, I just, music is a journey and I'm really looking forward to taking this journey with all the different guests I'm going to have. All right, Jen, I want to say thank you so much for coming on. It's been a blast getting to talk me. about this. Of course, anytime. You know you're always welcome on my show. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I, I feel like that's probably pretty clear here. I'm really mm -hmm. excited for this journey of the show moving forward. Everybody go check out Jen on Twitter, at Jen Paulvoet. Check me out on Twitter, at Nate Paulvoet. Make sure you're following In Between Media, and we will see you soon.